Ocrevus is regarded as a highly effective disease-modifying therapy with evidence in both relapsing and progressive MS, but it is an immunosuppressant and can cause infections, particularly with long-term use. So do you really need to take it every six months, or can you wait and allow your immune system to recover? Well, this study from Amsterdam looked at people who held Ocrevus and waited for their B lymphocytes to return before taking the next dose. What happened to them? Did they have more relapses and disability progression, and can we do blood tests to predict disease activity by looking at the B cells? We'll take a look at the results and I'll give my personal opinion. So as you know, Ocrevus, the drug itself, is a monoclonal antibody that works on B lymphocytes. B cells, the cells that make antibodies, have this protein on the surface called CD20. Ocrevus binds this protein, causes the cells to break open virtually all of them, and this has happens immediately within hours, even during the infusion. And typically, people would have no detectable B cells immediately after the treatment. There are many other drugs that do the same thing, such as rituximab, Briambi, Casimpta, and even other drugs like Gaziva used to treat cancer of the B cells. The standard dose of Ocrevus is a total dose of 600 milligrams divided into two 300 milligram doses two weeks apart the first time, and just a single 600 milligram dose after that every six months. Now the half-life of Ocrevus is pretty short, only 26 days, but it takes the bone marrow so long to regenerate B lymphocytes that the actual biological activity is very long. And it varies from person to person. Some people, their B cells could come back quickly, and some people a year after receiving Ocrevus, they could have zero detectable B cells. Now a lot of people were taking Ocrevus and they're walking around and they're doing great and they're not getting side effects, they're not getting infections. Why is that? Well, even if you have no B cells, it turns out the B cells can turn into larger cells called plasma cells that also make antibodies. And plasma cells do not have the CD20 surface protein and are hence immune to Ocrevus, so people can have normal levels of antibodies or immunoglobins. But if you continuously have no B cells for a prolonged period of time, eventually you start losing plasma cells. You can get low antibodies known as hypo gamma globulinemia, and that's linked to more infections. So can we stop this by holding Ocrevus for a period and allowing the B cells to come back? And by the way, my name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about MS every Wednesday. References in the notes below. And I want you to keep in mind that although Ocrevus is highly effective at preventing relapses and new lesions on the MRI scan, the effect on reducing actual disability progression over time in the long run may be more modest or moderate. For instance, this is data from the OPERA 1 and OPERA 2 trials. These are the randomized trials in relapsing MS, Ocrevus versus Rebif. Rebif is an older, injectable, lower efficacy medication. And Ocrevus only reduced confirmed disability progression by 35.6%. This is a measure where we see someone has worsening disability, and on a follow-up exam, they still have worsening disability, so it's not mere fluctuation. Now, of course, the effect of Ocrevus versus placebo may be greater than this, since Rebif is also an effective medication for MS, but the point is it's not a home run. It's not like Ocrevus stops all disability progression in everyone with MS, so we have to consider the risks and benefits, and if there's a way to give Ocrevus with lower risk of infection, that would definitely be worth it. So to give a background, I want to show some of the prior research on this topic. This is a German observational study of 116 people with relapsing MS who held Ocrevus during 2020, largely due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And compared to people who took the standard dosing every six months, they had similar rates of relapses and disability progression. And even when their B cells came back, it did not correlate with disease activity. In other words, B cells came back suggesting the effect of the drug wore off, but it didn't matter. People were still doing well. This retrospective study of 712 people receiving Ocrevus found that extended interval dosing, in other words, taking it less often than every six months, quote, yielded lower rates of hypogamma globulinemia, in other words, low antibodies, which are linked to infections, and no detrimental effect on short-term treatment efficacy. Of course, they didn't have long-term follow-up. 
This is the extension study of one of the phase two trials for Ocrevus, so not the big phase three trial like the OPERA trial I showed earlier. And this looked at people who were randomized to four cycles of Ocrevus and later were off treatment for 18 months just for safety purposes, essentially to see if they developed too many infections. I should give credit to senior author, very active on Twitter, Professor Klaus Schmierer. And they said after 18 months getting no drug, there were, quote, no new gadolinium enhancing or T2 lesions and quote there appeared to be fewer adverse events and infections so they couldn't continue the drug it wasn't approved it wasn't available and yet they still did very well after 18 months so most of the evidence suggests Ocrevus can be delayed, but I did find one study to the contrary. This is an Italian observational study, again during the COVID-19 era, and they looked at extended interval dosing, getting Ocrevus less often than every six months, and it was linked to a five times greater risk of new MRI lesions compared to the standard dosing, though there was no difference in confirmed disability progression. Although this is a significant relative difference, the absolute difference was not that large because new lesions were quite rare. So let's move to the crown jewel, the article I'm talking about in this video. So this study in Amsterdam, again, was during the COVID-19 era, and they recruited people from March to November in 2020, and they voluntarily agreed, the people in the study, to personalized dosing. So it's not a randomized trial. Everyone in the study said, check my blood, give me Ocrevus only when my B cells come back. And so 24 to 30 weeks after the prior dose of Ocrevus, they would do a blood test, and if the B cell count was less than 10 cells per microliter, a very low level, the dose of Ocrevus was held for another four weeks and they would do a blood test and keep doing blood tests until the B cell count was above 10 cells per microliter. And then they looked at them retrospectively to see what type of dosing they ended up with and standard interval dosing SID was defined as Ocrevus within 30 weeks. So it's a little more than six months. They gave them a little room for air and extended interval dosing was defined as Ocrevus not within 30 weeks greater than 30 weeks and it could be a little bit more than greater 30 weeks or much much greater than 30 weeks and the blood they analyzed was collected immediately before the next dose of Ocrevus. So for standard interval dosing, they would get it within 30 weeks. And for extended interval dosing, it would be the blood test right before the next dose, but greater than 30 weeks later. And these are the results of the blood test. You're looking at the percentage of CD4 positive cells. This is a marker of both B and T cells, but mostly B lymphocytes. I'm not sure why they chose this marker, but you can see the control group in gray had normal cells. You can see the standard interval dosing had very low levels of B cells, and for extended interval dosing, they were a little bit higher on average, but with a wide range. And as expected, other types of lymphocytes were not affected. This is CD4 positive or helper T cells, which are normal in all groups because they're not killed by Ocrevus. These are the baseline characteristics of people in the study. To the left is the people who had the standard interval dose versus to the right extended interval dosing. So 43 people getting the standard dose and 37 people getting an extended interval dose. For whatever reason, there were more women getting the standard interval, 63%, versus only 43% women, in other words, 53% men, getting Ocrevus delayed. The average age was a little bit higher in extended interval dosing, 44 versus about 42. More people with relapsing MS tended to get the standard interval, 81%, versus only 70% with the extended interval, and more people People getting the extended interval had primary progressive MS, 27% versus only about 12%. The average disease duration was about the same, around 11 years, and people getting the extended interval dose were a little more disabled on average. This is EDSS, Expanded Disability Status Scale, a measure of disability in multiple sclerosis research. For extended interval dosing, it was 4.39 versus 3.75 with the standard interval, so they were a little bit more disabled, the people with the extended extended interval. So keep in mind that this is very imbalanced. This is not a randomized trial, and this could explain some of the differences we see. So just take the results with a grain of salt. And here are just some of the results. I'll show the more detailed results with the different B cells and the correlations in a moment. Again, to the left is people getting the standard interval, and to the right, people getting the extended interval. One thing they looked at is serum neurofilament light chain. This is a marker of central nervous system 
injury that could be detected in the blood. It doesn't mean that much in an individual. It's highly variable, but in groups of people, it does correlate with relapses and disability progression. And you can see there was no difference. 8.44 in the extended interval group versus 8.41, essentially the same in the standard interval group. In terms of radiological activity, new MRI lesions, it was actually less in the extended interval group. 0.08 lesions per person on average, a very low rate. That's essentially less than 1 in 10 people having even one new lesion, a little bit more, 0.17 in the standard interval group. And so does delaying ocrevus cause you to have more lesions? Apparently not. What about relapses? There were actually zero relapses in people getting the extended interval and a trivial number of relapses, an annualized relapse rate of 0.04. That's only four relapses out of 100 people in a year of very low rate, and so obviously no statistically significant difference, but does delaying ocrevus cause relapses? Apparently not. So now we get to the important part of the study, the immunophenotyping. Which types of B cells come back and do they correlate with outcomes? So here we're looking at immature and transitional B cells, the new B cells that are just generated from the bone marrow. So again, gray is the control group. They haven't received ocrevus. The light blue is the standard in interval roughly every six months or less than 30 weeks since the last dose. And the darker blue is the extended interval. And you can see these people are getting a lot of these immature and transitional B cells, and they're getting more of them with the extended interval. So for these cells, it really does make a difference. They actually come back in significant numbers. But if we look at memory B cells, B cells that retain memory of antigens they've seen before, they're at very low levels, and even the extended interval dose doesn't see any significant number of them. And maybe that's why Ocrevus has this prolonged effect, this prolonged protection in some people. Even as the B cells come back, they come back differently and you don't get these memory B cells. So maybe your immune system has forgotten to attack myelin. Another idea is maybe these B cells come back, but they lack the tendency to migrate to the central nervous system. But that ends up being not true. They looked at expression of migratory markers, these cell surface proteins involved in extravasation into the central nervous system. It looks like word salad, but some of these may be familiar. VLA4 involved in the mechanism of action of Tysabri. Alcam previously thought to be an MS drug target, and they're actually increased on the surface of B cells after they repopulate, after receiving ocrevus. It turns out this has also been reported with another B cell depleting drug, rituximab. So that's not how these drugs work. There's a preserved tendency to migrate to the central nervous system, and that could be important in protection against central nervous system infections like PML. And so finally, let's look to see if there is a correlation between the types of B cells that come back and clinical outcomes. So here on the top, you see the different types of B lymphocytes, immature B cells, transitional B cells, naive or activated cells, memory cells, even plasma cells, and they color-coded it. So positive or strong correlation meant a bright blue color. Bright red is a strong negative correlation. A white color means no correlation, and very light colors means a weak correlation. And gray simply means there was no event on that type. And so you can see the control group, CG, standard interval dosing, and extended interval dosing. So there was no correlation between the type of B cells coming back and relapses whatsoever. Of course, there were no relapses in people getting extended interval dosing. You simply could not predict relapses by doing this blood test at all. The same was true if you looked at baseline characteristics. So they looked at age, body mass index, duration of the disease, disability level, EDSS. There was no correlation. Now extended interval dosing, there were no attacks, and so that's why it looks bright blue, but there was no statistically significant difference between standard interval dosing and extended interval dosing because there were so few relapses both ways. What if you look at EDSS, a measure of disability in MS research? 
search. Again, there was no correlation. You can see all these very light colors. You could not predict disability looking at the type of B cells that came back. And the same thing with baseline characteristics. It looks bright blue here only because both groups, both the standard interval dosing and extended interval dosing did better than the control group. And as I mentioned before, there was no correlation either with B cell immunophenotyping, the type of B cells that came back or with extended interval dosing versus standard interval dosing and other outcomes like serum neurofilament light chain, a measure of breakdown of the central nervous system, or the number of new lesions on MRI. However, people who got either regimen, extended interval or standard interval of Ocrevus, did have less relapses and less new MRI lesions compared to the control group as expected because Ocrevus is an effective drug. So why might this be? Why can't we see a difference between standard dosing and extended interval dosing. Well, one reason is that their cutoff, 10 cells per microliter, is really low. So essentially, all of these people had zero or a very low number of B cells most of the time. If you really want people to have B cell repletion in significant numbers, you really have to wait around 70 to 80 weeks, more than a year, if you want everyone or nearly everyone to have their B cells come back. So if you look at the graph on the left, this looks at B cells per microliter microliter in standard and extended interval dosing, you can see a lot of people have normal B cells at the beginning and they go down and stay down. It doesn't really matter how often you get Ocrevus. Waiting one month and letting them come back a little just isn't a big deal. And you can see in the graph on the right, what's happening is that most people have essentially zero B cells and then a small number get exponential growth between blood tests and end up with a respectable number of B lymphocytes. But is there really a difference between these two groups? Not really. So to summarize a little bit, what are the answered questions and what are the unanswered questions? Well, the first question is, do you need to have zero B lymphocytes forever for the drug to be effective? Absolutely not. That has been completely refuted by this and other studies. There seems to be a persistent efficacy of the drug even as B lymphocytes come back. Now, can you allow B lymphocytes to come back to normal for a prolonged period of time and still have the drug be effective? That we don't know. This study didn't answer that question because they gave Ocrevus as soon as the B cells started to come back. Another question is, can you reduce the risk of infections by holding Ocrevus and allowing the immune system to recover? Yes, you can. Multiple studies show this to be the case, though the exact risk to benefit ratio is unclear. The next question, can you do a blood test to determine when someone needs the next dose of Ocrevus? The answer seems to be no, at least based on this study, there are simply no correlations with any of these blood tests with clinical outcomes whatsoever. Any type of B lymphocyte, it doesn't seem to correlate that strongly. Now, of course, the final question, what should you do? Of course, you should talk to your own provider. This is something that people would have a lot of disagreement on. I think for many people with multiple sclerosis, it would make sense to take it regularly for a period of time and then to allow B cell repletion to reduce the risk of the medication. Of course, it would be good to have a randomized trial, for instance, every six months versus every year Ocrevus and see if there are clinical differences. There's actually a study being done on sort of the reverse, like higher dose Ocrevus versus lower dose or standard dose 600 milligrams every six month Ocrevus. And the theory is that in one of the randomized trials, people with a higher body mass index had more disability progression. So some people actually think the opposite, that Ocrevus could be underdosed, whereas I tend to think that maybe it's a little bit overdosed and we're causing too much risk. My personal opinion is taking a drug such as Ocrevus, and of course this is the same for other B cell depleting drugs, rituximab, Briumbi, Casimpta, continuously for a prolonged period of time with zero B cells. I do think it's quite risky. So I think it makes sense to do extended interval dosing at some point. I would be more conservative in someone who is older, who has other comorbidities, is just higher risk of infection, or someone who is having serious infections. So I'd be interested to know, do you take Ocrevus or B cell depleting drug? 
Do you do the standard interval dosing every six months, or do you do extended interval dosing? Have you had infections? And have you noticed a change in efficacy of the drug if you do do extended interval dosing? Some people notice what may be called a crap gap where they feel subjectively worse if they haven't had their treatment for a period of time. Maybe they have fatigue or cognitive fogging. That's not really addressed in this particular study, and so I'd be interested to know your experience and let me know if you have ideas for other videos.